Hey, I am Brett Lee Clark, and this is my channel. In today's video, I am going to be ranking all of Nev Campbell's movies that I've seen. So if I haven't seen them, I can't rank them. But I've seen 14, I think it is? Yeah, 14. <laughs> yeah, so I've seen at least 14. I'm not, I'm not counting TV shows and stuff, because I've seen her on a bunch of TV shows. Are You Afraid of the Dark? That's when I first saw her. And I thought she was the Pink Ranger from Power Rangers when I saw her in Are You Afraid of the Dark? And then I saw Scream, I was like, oh, that's the same girl from Are You Afraid of the Dark? So yeah, that's how, anyway. <laughs> so I'm not raking TV shows, just her movies. Um, but yeah, I don't want to make this video last forever since I have 13 movies to go through. So I'll touch each one of them. Well, that sounds weird. <laughs> I'll just <laughs> go through each one of them and name like a few facts about it or give you the synopsis of the plot or tell you why I like it and that sort of thing. And then we'll just move on to the next. Also, the Scream movies, I've kind of like, I didn't, in, in reality, maybe you're gonna see, can you even see that? Is it too dark over there? If I lean back, it might get brighter. Over here, oh, look how much brighter it is, I'm leaning back. So in reality, you would know that those would probably be in my, like all four of them would be my top four. So I kind of shuffled them down a little bit just to be nice to the other movies. But let's just go ahead and show you the top four screams. But well, but they're not really, so. But yeah, anyway. So we'll move on to the first movie. Are you ready? Also, if you like movies, uh, subscribe. I am Brett Lee Clark. Again, I'll say it one more time. You can follow me on Instagram. And also, like, I'll have cooking videos, movies, all kinds of stuff coming. I'm not really a channel that makes sense. I just post whatever I like. So if you like what I like, then great. Movie reviews, I haven't done that yet, but <laughs> review, product reviews, movie stuff, like countdown lists. Uh, I have some true crime stuff coming, I promise. I really do. I've already recorded it. I just haven't edited it yet. So it is coming. I'm trying to do two videos a week um, for real this time. Also, if you want to email me, you can email me at dearbrettley, which at gmail.com. And I'm going to do like advice videos where I give advice, but don't really take my advice, but you can ask for my advice or ask me a question, all that stuff. So yeah. Um, and then I have some unboxing videos, all kinds of things. So if you want me to entertain you for like 10 ish minutes twice a week, subscribe. Yeah. Okay. And I'm also gay. So if you don't like gays, don't subscribe. If you do like gays, why didn't you subscribe? It's homophobic not to subscribe, right? I'm just kidding. You know what is homophobic is this fucking zit on my face. I would I would rather have more than just one. You know what I'm saying? It looks better when you have like five compared to just one. Because if you have just one, you're like, how you doing? What you doing there? I like screen movies too. You know, like, get the fuck out of my face. <sighs> anyway, okay. I am very random, by the way. If you can tell, I just kicked the camera. I am very random. So if you like random people, hi. So, let's start this Nev Campbell countdown. All right, coming in at number 14, we have An Amish Murder. Now, this was like a Lifetime movie, I believe. I remember rec I, I recorded it on the DVR just because I knew Nev Campbell was going to be in it. And I'm pretty sure they promoted it a lot, like, Nev Campbell, Nev Campbell. Um, but I remember she gets kidnapped by a cop, or she's a cop, and then she gets kidnapped. And I remember there's a bathtub scene, and she escapes. And, like, she used to be Amish, but she, I don't know. It's the whole thing. Anyway, TV movie. Wasn't that great. On IMDb, it is rated 6.2. So maybe it's not that bad. Maybe I just thought it was bad. So if you can find it, check it out. Yeah. Coming in at number 13, we have The Company. Okay, now this... If you love dancing and you like to be a little bit bored, but also intrigued and mesmerized at the same time, great. This movie is for you. It's a great dancing movie. It's just not my cup of tea. That's all it is. I mean... Great job. I think Nev produced it a lot. She like put a lot into it. So sorry it's so low, but I just did it. I never, it never connected with me. But it's a beautiful movie and Nev Campbell does great in it. And I'm pretty sure that her working on this was the reason why she wasn't in Scream 3 that much. Even though they came out like three years apart, I'm pretty sure that was the reason that her and Kevin Williamson couldn't find matching schedules. And that's the reason he couldn't write or work on the Scream 3. It's the whole thing. I could be wrong in that, but for whatever reason, I've always thought that. So I've always had a little bit of anger towards this movie because it ruined Scream 3. But that could be completely wrong, and if it is, I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, that's why I didn't like it. Okay, moving on. <laughs> oh, also, wait, in the company, it has, it does, I, I love watching movies and being like, Bratch! like comparing like other movies that I actually like. So like in this movie, you have Sidney Prescott and you have Dr. Loomis in the company, huh? From the new, from like Rob Zombie Halloween, but still, huh? Sydney Prescott, Dr. Loomis hanging out together. That's kind of fun. <laughs> anyway. 
Moving on to number 12, we have Reefer Madness. Now this one I actually do did like. I thought, thought it would be higher up on my list, but it wasn't. But it's fun. Um, I kind of put it lower on my list because Nev Campbell's not in it as much. It's more of a Kristen Bell movie, which Kristen Bell, hello, Scream 4. So Sydney Prescott and the girl who gets killed by Anna Paquin, or no, the girl who kills Anna Paquin, huh, from Scream 4. There you go. They're in the same movie together. Also, Nev Campbell's brother, isn't it? He he's like the second, he's like the the co-star to Kristen Bell. And on top of that, he was also in The Amish Murder. So Nev Campbell's brother hanging out. I always remembered watching it and being like, that's Nev Campbell's brother. He's kind of cute. That could be Nev Campbell's brother-in-law. What's your name? Call me. But <laughs> anyway, um, it's a musical about like, so back in like the 50s and all, they would have those like, if you smoke weed once, you'll lose all your brain cells. If you smoke weed once, you'll become a prostitute, that type of thing. So that's what it's about. It's like making fun of those like 50s, like um, how to be a good person videos that they made kids watch in school, you know? Like this is a nice thing to do. Um, and Nev Campbell has like a, a little musical number in it. So if you want to see her sing and dance, check it out. It's actually really funny. I used to watch it a lot when I was a kid. So Reefer Madness, pretty good. Coming in at number 11, we have Clouds. Okay, Clouds is on Disney Plus, came out in 2020. Um, Nev Campbell plays a mom, and she has a very, she has a, an amazing job as a mom, and her kid's dying of cancer. That's the whole movie. Is that he's a, he like wants to be like a an Ed Sheeran type person, singer songwriter, and Nev Campbell's like his supportive mom is like you can do it, and it's very sweet, very sad, and I I like it. It's just I can't watch it more than once because I'll cry. So <laughs> seeing a mother on the screen and it's Nev Campbell, it's like oh I'm so sorry. Can I give you a hug? That's how I feel the whole time I'm watching it, even though it's like happy moments and funny moments. Anyway, check it out. It's on Disney Plus. It's free. Okay, coming in at number 10, we have, uh oh, Scream 3. Now, I actually, Scream 3 is like a love hate with me. I used to love it because it was like the most modern of the ones, you know, and then part four came out. But I always knew that there were problems with Scream 3. Kevin Williamson didn't write it, and the guy who wrote it just kind of like made up some BS story that made, tied them all in together. And it's kind of like over the top with the explosions and stuff, and Courtney Cox's bangs. The only thing that makes that movie, like, the, my favorite part of the movie is Parker Posey playing the other Gail Weathers. She's by far, she's the most underrated Scream person throughout the whole franchise. She's amazing. So Parker Posey is the reason why this is even on the list. I'm just kidding. But yeah. And also Nev Campbell's not in it that much. So that's also why it's down the list. Coming in at number nine, we have Drowning Mona. Now this is like one of those, um, like an ensemble cast as Danny DeVito, Bette Midler, Jamie Lee Curtis. We got Laurie Strode and Sidney Prescott in the same movie. I don't think they're ever in the same scene together. Maybe they are once, but Anyways, uh, the whole movie is about Bette Midler's character gets murdered, and they're trying to figure out who the murderer is. Nev Campbell's married to Casey Affleck, who his wig in that movie. Uh, he looks like the, he looks like Stewart from Mad TV. But it's a cute movie. It's funny, and everyone drives a Yugo. Is that what it's called? Like a little Pinto-looking car. But it's. I don't know. It's like a 90s funny movie. Came out in 2000, but it's a 90s funny movie. <laughs> anyway, uh, and you get to see like Bette Midler and Nev Campbell on screen together. I don't know. I, I always, that, that kind of stuff makes me happy when I see multiple celebrities I like in the same movie. But it's funny. And Danny DeVito is Nev Campbell's dad. It's cute. It's on Amazon Prime for free, so you can watch it for free. Um, I, I turned it on the other day. I didn't actually I just let it play in the background, but watch it. Coming in at number eight, we have Three to Tango with Matthew Perry. Huh? Look at that. Gail Weathers, Matthew Perry. We got, we got Ro Monica and Chandler. Nev Campbell's worked with Monica and Chandler, and they're married, and the friend. So there's a whole thing working with both of them. And I always wonder, like on set, is is Matthew Perry like, oh, you worked with Courtney, and he's she's like, yeah, I love her, she's so sweet, or is it just like we don't talk about it? But being like Courtney, guess what? I'm with the Sydney. Oh, look at what's your favorite scary movie, Courtney? Huh? I don't know, but anyway, <laughs> Three to Tango, Matthew Perry, Dylan McDermott, Nev Campbell. Um, Dylan McDermott's like a a businessman, and Nev's his mistress. And he thinks that uh, Matthew Perry Chandler is gay, so he tells him to watch his mistress, not realizing that Matthew Perry is straight in the movie. So he like falls in love with Nev Campbell. It's a cute little love story. It's funny. 
Um, yeah, that's, I don't know. And there's like a, yeah, that's, it's good. <laughs> Watch it. I about to say, I, I remember like a margarita scene with Nev and the girls and like him. And then there's like a bathtub scene. Anyway, check it out. Three to Tango, Matthew Perry, and Nev Campbell. Yeah. Coming in at number seven, we have Studio 54, or 54, however you want to call it. Um, yep, yeah, Nev Campbell, Ryan Philippine. Philippi, Philippine, Philippi, Philippi, Philippine, Philippa, whatever, Philippi, Ryan, that guy, yeah, from I Know You Did Last Summer, Mary, he was married to Reese Witherspoon, Ryan, yeah, he was the only reason I liked the movie, because he's like shirtless through half of it, don't judge me. I just remember Nev Campbell like played like a, she was like glamour, like more glamorous than he was like a waiter or a busboy or something. Anyway, it's a good movie and Ryan's shirtless for a lot of it. So yeah, check out Studio 54. Coming in at number six, we got uh, Scream 2. This is me editing. Um, I just wanna say, I, if you're a Scream fanatic, I'm sorry. I'm trying to rank these movies um, by not being biased to the Scream films and putting them all in the top four. So don't take offense that number two is in part is in slot six. Don't take offense. I would take offense, but don't take offense. I'm ranking these movies as though I'm not a Scream fanatic, even though I am a Scream fanatic. So just know that's, yeah, okay, don't take offense, sorry. <laughs> Continue. Scream 2, yeah, we love it, right? Um, what is there to say about Scream 2? Great sequel, it was fun. I like the, the ending fight scene's my favorite, probably the killer, I won't, get, I won't spoil it, but the, the female killer, the acting is amazing. It's beyond, it's like Oscar worthy, okay? But horror movies don't get Oscars, so whatever. Even though, even though a lot of times, like Nev Campbell in Scream 1, her acting at the very end, there are a lot of A-list stars who could not do that. Like you can see fear and panic and anger all in her eyes and the yeah, whole thing. Anyway, Scream 2, number six, yay, 1997. I liked it. Nev Campbell, yeah. Coming in at number five, we have Skyscraper. I know this isn't like critically acclaimed or no one really cared for it, but I like it. I loved it. I like those old time, like that 80s action movies that like resembles, it's like a love story to die hard type of movie. And I like thinking that like this would have been Sydney's life had Billy not went crazy. Had her mom not been a this would have been her life. She would have went off and married, went off and became a nurse in the military or a doctor, whatever she was, and married The Rock. And then her and The Rock would have lived in a skyscraper in China and there would have been a fire and her and her kids would have been, had to find a way out. Like, it, it, that's what I liked about it. It was just more like, it was almost like she was Sydney in the future if we just didn't have a scream. That makes sense. So I'm like, oh, look at her little kids. And then she has like a fight, she has fight scenes in it. She has two fight scenes, I think. She like fights one bad guy and then she fights the bad girl. Whole thing. I wish the ending fight scene with her and the girl had been more, but you know, we still got a little bit of a Sydney type fight happening. Anyway, so I liked it. Um, I wish it would have, they, they messed up that when they released it, they released it in America a week before they released it in China. So in America, it was like $30 million or something like, I think it's even lower than that. So it didn't register as like a good movie. And then the next week when it came out in China, it was like $350 million it, it got in the box office. But the first week it already happened, so it was already like no one in America thought it was going to be good. But they released them at the same time, they could have been like, it's the biggest movie in the world! You know, like 350 million. Which they did do a commercial like that, but it was like two weeks too late. That makes sense. <sighs> anyway, coming in at number four, we have Scream 4. There you go. Um, I know, I know, man. I like Scream 4. It's, I think it's one of the best sequels. I like it also because it's a standalone sequel, whereas like, um, so let me, let me explain. When you have a, when you have a movie franchise, right, and that movie franchise stops, when you bring it back, it makes the original franchise a classic. Halloween, for example. Halloween, you know, you had Halloween 1, Halloween 2, Halloween 3. Four and five were kind of like, eh, you know. I mean, I love them, Danielle Harris, come on. And then like six made it worse. And then, oh wait, H2O, it makes it all a classic. It makes the whole bundle a classic. And we're, we're gonna forget these movies, but guess what? We are making, we're bringing back the main star because this movie is so successful. So to me, part four was like the H2O of Scream. Like you had the trilogy and then you have part four. And actually I feel as though it's not even H2O, it's more the new Halloween, Halloween 2018. Cause you can you can go from that one to this one. So you can get, get Scream 1 and you have Scream 4. You don't really need the middle. All you need to tell people is like, oh, by the way, there's a movie called Stab within the movie and everyone's famous from part one. That's all you need to know. And you can get two movies. You can have like that movie and the anniversary movie. 
you don't need two and three because they never even mentioned two and three really in the other ones. But anyway, so whenever I show people who've never seen Scream and they only have time for two, I show them one and four. Now my other two are really good. You should watch them. They're on HBO Max currently for free if you want to watch one, two, or three. But we're gonna watch one and four. And also, usually people I show it to like they know who Hayden Panettiere is and know who Emma Roberts is, so it's more of like a they like it more. You know what I mean? And it's like they have iPhones. It's the whole thing. It makes it easier to watch when it has modern technology in it, right? Anyway, no disrespect to part two and three, but yeah. That's why I like part four. Great, okay. Coming in number three, we have The Craft with Nev Campbell and Billy Loomis. He's in there too, it's crazy. You, I always wonder like what Scream would have been like had he had that haircut instead of the greasy, like I'm a soccer player looking haircut, whatever he had in Scream. It bothers me, it's kind of cute, but it bothers me. I like his hair in The Craft, but I think it wouldn't work as him as Billy, but maybe it would, maybe it'd make it even creepier because it's like, Oh, he's so clean cut. And now, yeah, anyway, back to the craft. Um, I was always liked it. I always liked the idea of I, Teen Witch when I was a kid was like my favorite, like one of my favorite movies. So like growing up with Teen Witch and then there's like a, a scary version of Teen Witch almost. That's why, that's one of the reasons why I guess why I liked it. Um, and then obviously cause Nev Campbell's in it, I liked it. Um, I felt bad for her cause of her back thing, it was gross. And Marsha Brady's in it, not the real Mark but yeah. The movie Marsha Brady's in it and she's a bitch. So it's good, I like the craft. That's why it's number three, so yeah. All right, coming in at number two is, do you know what it is gonna be? Do you know what movies are left? <laughs> Wild Things, all right, Wild Things. So, Wild Things, Nev Campbell, uh, Denise Richards, Kevin Bacon, Matt Dillon, and as Tatum would say, if you pause it just right, you can see his <laughs> AKA Kevin Bacon's in the shower scene. He put it out there, so I might as well look at it. Okay, anyway, <laughs> I liked it, uh, it's good. It takes place, um, it's like, does it take place in New Orleans? If you've never seen it, it's pretty good because the way the movie, there's so many twists in it that you never really know how it's gonna end. And if you haven't seen it in a long time, you probably forget who the soul, there's, there's like a, not soul, yeah. Soul survivor, I guess. You forget who is the last person in on it, if that makes sense. <laughs> like the very end, you're like, oh, oh wait, I forgot about that part, oh my God, yay. So yeah, watch Wild Things, it's really good. There's murder, mayhem, lying. Uh, there's a threesome between Nev Campbell and Denise Richards and Matt Damon. Nev Campbell, I like her acting in this because she plays like a trashy girl and then she's like bossy or not like she's just yeah she's very crass like it's good it's the whole it's like a 180 of Sydney Prescott if you yeah, if you will so check out uh Wild Things okay all right coming in at number one we have can you guess Scream duh Drew Barrymore. And I was in the theater, I saw it, not opening night, but I remember seeing it with my brother. And I was like, oh, Jason. And I said Jason, like a fuck, I would have died. Cause I, I mean, they were gonna die anyway. But I would have got the question wrong too. Cause as soon as I said it, and he's like, nope. I was like, yes it is. Like talking to myself in the theater. And then I was like, oh no. I was like, I would have killed us both, my man. Kevin Williamson's writing in general, I relate to from Dawson's Creek. That was like a huge thing for me as a kid. Um, even like his newer stuff, like Stalker, that show on, uh, C was it CBS? That show was really good. Tell Me A Story is really good. He just has like, he just knows how to write characters that you can relate to, or at least I can relate to. I'm not sure, maybe because we're both gay and we like horror movies, because Kevin Williams is gay too. I don't know. Even there's no gay, there's no gay characters in the first four Scream movies really. Like, I still relate to them. I can still vividly remember sitting on my neighbor's bed, like watching the watching the trailer, and when Nev Campbell like falls out the window, like ah, my friend was like, "Oh, but she gone? Like she's just gone?" Like I can still vividly remember. That's how obsessed I was as a child. Like I've gotten a little less obsessed. Well, not really, but <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. But it's amazing acting. It's amazing writing. It's perfect. There's nothing wrong with it, and it still holds up to this day as a classic. It's like the psycho of the 90s. You know what I'm saying? Like it's that type of classic. I remember we taped it off pay-per-view. I had the director's cut. So you saw like the guts come out on Steam. I had that version on VHS. I remember taking it to my friend's house and we're downstairs watching it. And his mom comes down, y'all watch y'all watch, watch y'all watching. And we said scream, not thinking it wasn't a big deal. And she comes, she was so pissed and she ejected it and she took it. I had to tell my mom to tell her to get back to me because she took it from me thinking that I had like, I don't know what she thought. That I just brought adult films into the house because it was an R-rated movie. Like, get out of here. 
Like we're in we're in middle school. We can watch an R-rated movie. We talk just like that. We can watch it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyway, I'm rambling. So yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching my ranking of all the Nev Campbell movies that I've seen. I am Brett Lee Clark, and you can follow me on Instagram. If you like this video, please subscribe. I have more videos coming that are horror-ish related. I also have regular movie videos. I have cooking videos. I have review videos and unboxing videos. So subscribe, go watch those. And there's a gay proposal. If Britney Spears shows up, go watch that. Wow, how'd I get her there? Green screen. But anyway, so <laughs> go watch that stuff if you want. You don't have to. Uh, you can also email me at dearbrettlee at gmail.com and ask me a question or ask me for advice. Whatever you want to do, and I'll answer it in a Dear Brett Lee video. <sighs> Which sounds so stupid, but you know what? I need content, and that sounds like a good idea to me. So, And I want to give advice, and I want to talk to you. So email me. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, again, Brett Lee Clark, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Did someone else say that one? I don't know. Okay, anyway, bye. <laughs>